Okay, welcome to this teaching video on P4 for the Unit 17 Cambridge Technicals. For P4, you need to prepare a business proposal for your development project. Now, you've just done M2, and so it should be very clear what your project now is, and this is you now putting it into a proposal for the Gatwick Hotels Association. So, what does the specification say? It says that this criteria requires you as the learner to prepare a business proposal for the chosen development project. The business proposal should cover the headings identified in the teaching content for the unit. The evidence will be completed as a business proposal. Now, this is very, very clear and very, very important. If you do not cover the headings identified in the teaching content, which I'll go through with you in a minute, you will not pass this pass task and not passing this pass task will result in a fail. So you must make sure you have done that. So. P4 is different to the rest of your coursework. All your coursework so far will be handed in as one document. P4 is a separate entity in itself. You need to make this look nice. It needs to look good. It needs to look professional. It needs to look like an official business proposal where you're pitching for their custom. So this business proposal will have two sections and the two sections should be distinctly different and I should be able to see, ah right, now I'm going into section two because it is clearly labeled. I should have a contents page at the very beginning of your business proposal with section one and then the, the information that you can see there, section two and then that information. It should be really, really comprehensive this. So, let's start off with what requirements are in section one. First of all, requirement of target audience. Now, this is quite hard because the Gatwick Hotels Association has a broad range of customers and what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to sit there and start going, right, I want to target all the people who are tech savvy and like to do different things with technology, nor do I want you to start going and making general assumptions of saying people in the age bracket of 20 to 40 because they're probably good with technology and, and alienating anybody over the age of 40. Essentially, your target audience is anybody you can book a hotel room. So they're for anybody over the age of 18 when you can legally book a hotel room. In your information, you need to talk about your target audience. Uh, you can say that the target audience needs to have the following device or the following knowledge or, or will be required to do the following, but you cannot make generalized uh, in sort of assumptions about your target audience. It needs to be quite generic, over 18s and this is why, okay? You can talk about uh, the key demographics of people who go into these hotels, especially into the rooms you're booking. An 18-year-old is unlikely to book a £400 a night room, uh, and therefore you're going to be aiming at people uh, who are able to spend that, maybe business people or people who are retired. You might want to comment on that, but you cannot say it's specifically for those people because you'll alienate a large amount of people who are not in that category. The processing required. What processing needs to be done by the Gatwick Hotels Association in order to make this project viable? Now, you should have this from your M2, but you should be talking about training, you should be talking about ordering, you should be talking about payments, you should be talking about scheduling, and you should be talking about how this is going to go from not being in their establishment at the moment to being installed and usable. You need to talk about any data that is going to be exchanged. And there needs to be two sections to this data exchange. There needs to be the data that's exchanged between yourself and the Gatwick Hotels Association. And what are you going to require from them? And there needs to be data exchange between the Gatwick Hotels Association and then their clients. So if you're saying that they're going to have an app, what does the app need? What information are they going to be taking? What data are they going to be taking from their users? Uh, is that any different to they, what they normally take when this person makes a booking? You need to put that in there. This business proposal needs to be a, a, a sort of summary of everything that you said already in one document and more condensed, okay? Things. You need to talk them through exactly what things need to be purchased, what things are going to be used and have to be used, and how much they cost and where you're going to be getting them from, where you're going to be sourcing them, all right? Uh, this includes things that you will not be purchasing, but you are assuming people will have in order to be able to use your uh, chosen solution. For instance, if you're using a, uh, a door lock and you're assuming that they've got an Android device with operating system whatever and an iOS device with operating system whatever on it, therefore that is a thing that is going to be required in order for you to, to do this work. 
networking requirements. You need to state to them what you require of their network. Is it just an internet connection? Is it a Wi-Fi connection? Is it a wired connection? Is it a broadband speed of this and above? Are they gonna have to get a new internet connection? Are you gonna put it on the same network as the guests who are using the Wi-Fi? Are you going to just hope that it works? You need to be clear in this, what network uh, requirements are there? And if you want to go into more detail about protocols and about the information that you learn about networks in unit one, that would be a good place to do it. Devices to be used. Now you might be thinking, well this is similar to things and you're more than welcome to tie the things and devices to be used together, but the devices to be used takes it beyond the actual device that you're uh, talking about in the things. So the things is about the actual, say, door lock and the phone that gets you in. The devices to be used talks about the management console, the management device, the system that is going to be used uh, in order to control this information, to override every device that's going to be used. So if you're connecting to a network, are you going to require them to have a server or a switch or a repeater or a hub or a router? Uh, that's the devices to be used. It's, it's a much broader scope than just that device. Okay, And then security issues. You need to discuss what cyber security issues there may be in using your device. There may be, for some of you, not much that you can write in this. If you're doing Wi-Fi operated blinds that you can simply say blind down, security issues, they're not going to be able to get into the blinds, steal your uh, mainframe computer's uh, information, uh, so you're not going to be able to do much there. But you, you need to be thinking about what security you're going to put in place and, and how you're going to protect the business. All right, so that's section one. Section two is all about the stakeholder. Now remember, stakeholders are anybody who's got an, uh, an interest in this th this project. Okay, so that's the individual hotels plus the Gap Hotels Association plus the clients. Okay, and and yourself to a certain degree. So stakeholder considerations. You need to consider who the stakeholders are, and that's who I've just mentioned above, and explain what their considerations need to be when they go to implement this. Who benefits from the application? It's not good enough for you to just say everyone, because that's not true. And you need to be clear who is going to benefit from your application being installed. The customer for speed of access to their room. The uh, Galaxy Tales Association because people will be going to their website to get a comprehensive understanding of what technology is in their hotels. Uh, the Hilton Hotel at Gatwick because they'll have... Uh, 10 rooms with this feature in it whereas the other hotels that are actually at the airport don't have that That's the sort of things you need to be discussing How does society benefit? Now society remember is everybody outside of the stakeholders So how will society benefit from your installation? And that is a really difficult one when it comes to this because you might be thinking Well, I don't really know how anybody benefits from the fact that I've got smart lights in a hotel room But you can talk about things like smart lights go off after a certain time of inactivity has been censored and therefore it's saving electricity Which protects the environment uh, you could talk about uh, a wider group of people being able to access the rooms So you don't need to have a physical key if you've got a disability you can get in with your voice You can then voice activate the lights whatever it might be you're talking about a bigger a bigger benefit it than simply making money for the Gap Hotels Association is, is the basis there. How will the company benefit? This is just the Gap Hotels Association. Do not promise the earth here. Do not say, oh, if you install my smart light bulb, I guarantee that you'll be getting £1.4 million pounds more worth of bookings within two years. Don't, don't con your way through it, like I've said previously. How are they going to benefit? They're going to benefit by return custom. They're going to benefit by positive reviews, hopefully. Okay. Uh, who will develop the application? This is the provider. Okay. So if you're if you're buying in a Yale lock, Yale are going to be developing the application. Give me a bit of background about them. Why am I going to pay you to pay them? Why is the product that you're saying? I should buy worth buying over any other product. You need to convince me that you need to do a little bit of a sales pitch. Okay. Now, this report should be in a clear format, and that format should be a written report that comes out separately to anything else. This will be presented to the stakeholder right, prior to the proposal pitches, okay? So the idea is that you will give this report uh, as a nice document, I'd like a title page with their logo on it, with your name on it, with a title, with a clear information of what it is, business proposal for the following development project, 
Then on the next page, I want a contents page using uh, the advanced formatting in Word, followed by clear headings, subheadings, so on and so forth, all the way through section two. That is clear that we've now progressed into section two, an introduction about what section two will discuss, then the subheadings and headings, uh, and then it, it all to be nicely printed off as a, as a single document that can be presented alongside your P5 uh, pitch. Okay, so that's P4 and that is your business proposal.